Hey everybody, Josh from Drum Highway here. Today I want to talk about rhythmic anchors, and you may be thinking, what are those? Well, we're going to talk about it. First, we're going to look at a 15, 20 second clip of me playing live with a band so you can get an idea of how these are used in process. See if you can figure out what the rhythmic anchor is, and I'll see you on the other side. Were you able to hear it? I was thinking of one and two and one and two and, and we were sort of basing everything that we were doing around that rhythm. In this video, I want to clarify exactly what a rhythmic anchor is, why they're so cool and fun to use, and how I phrase either with or around them. Let's get into it. A rhythmic anchor is a rhythm within a musical phrase. Sometimes you'll hear things like motives, and that could be just a repeated pattern, but I think of the rhythmic anchor as something that occurs within generally a larger phrase. Four bars, eight bars, sometimes even 16 bars. In the case of this example, although it's a little bit hard to hear, it's kind of in a four bar phrase. So the rhythm and the phrasing is kind of going dun and two and three and four and two and two and here comes the rhythm. Bum, 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 dugga, 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 bum, 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 bum. So that anchor is occurring in those last two bars when it's playing that rhythmic phrase over and over again, one and two and. Let me play it just on the drums, two bars of groove and two bars of that rhythmic phrase. So as you can hear, I was playing two bars at a time and then two bars of that rhythmic anchor. And I was playing it in different parts of the set, but still keeping that same timing. One and two and, one and two and. If you're enjoying this video, I ask you to please like and subscribe to the channel so we can get this out to as many people as we can. Thanks. I really do think of this as sort of a boat anchor. You got the boat going and the and the anchor's holding everything down, and although that boat is moving around, it can only go so far. So this anchor sort of gives us something to play off of, but it doesn't allow us to go too far. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm always thinking about that anchor. Obviously, when I'm playing, I'm hearing that anchor, but I'm also very much affected by what's happening around me. So I can either play the exact rhythm of that anchor, I can play just part of the rhythm of that anchor, or I could play something almost counterpoint to the anchor. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, hey Josh, hey, I get it, I understand the concept, rhythmic anchor, blah, 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 really great, but I don't know exactly how to go about doing that. Well, I'll tell you, there's actually a very step-by-step -step way that you can build from the very basic of just playing the exact thing to going a little further out and a little further out. Now, I want to keep in mind that when I play with other people, I'm listening to other people and that's what's affecting what it is I'm gonna play. So it's not like I'm going to crazy town every time I sit down to play the drums or anything like that. We're gonna go through this a few different ways. First, the exact rhythm, then partial rhythm, and then sort of out there in the wild a little bit. So let's build through these. First one, exact rhythm, just like we did before. Practice playing this. You're gonna play this one and two rhythm. Keep it in a four bar pattern. You're gonna play two bars of just some kind of groove. You don't have to play anything exactly like this, but you get the idea. Fairly straight rock groove, and then try to catch that one and two and. Now we can play that within a groove or with a little bit of a figure to it. So I'll do two times through, first within time, and the second time playing on some tom fills. Do you get the idea of that? Works great, sounds good, sometimes that's all you need. Hang in there with me, at the end of the video I'm gonna play the full clip from the band. I want you to hear these concepts live and in action, and you'll probably hear and see them differently as well. Hang in there. Part two of this is I'm going to embellish the groove a little bit more and the figure a little bit more. So I'll fill some notes in between. I'll do it a couple times through, one with a little bit of stuff, and the second time with a little bit more stuff. I don't know why I said more stuff like that, but I did, here we go.
So as you can see, I'm just breaking it apart a little bit at a time. And what you can find is when you've got that four bar phrase going on, you can still play one and two and the same, and you can almost use those two bars in front of it as a more open section. You can play more stuff within there and then just kind of catch the figure. And then after that, you can play a little bit more stuff even within the figure. So in this last example, I'm gonna sort of do that the first time where I play a little bit more and a little bit more, and then hopefully the second or third time, depending on how I do it, I'll see what happens here, you'll hear it. Uh, by the end, I'm not gonna be playing anything that sounds like what's going on with the rhythm, but what I can guarantee you is that that rhythmic anchor, bang, gong, gong, ga, is in here the entire time. As you go out, and I'm gonna play this clip again, I want you to hear sort of what's happening there a little bit. It's so important to be listening while you're doing any of this stuff. That really is the most important thing. And we've played together for a long time, and everybody in that band is a super great listener. So you can hear the guitar player going and doing his solo. You can hear the bass player at one point working his way up the neck when I've got that rhythmic figure to build tension as we're going to bring everything back in and extend it over the bar line in a one and two and. We come out with one and two and, which is cool. And the the crazy part about this video is that, in a sense, things are getting kind of wild between the guitar and the bass and the drums, and the grounding force of the rhythm is often sometimes the piano player who's holding down that groove, the way he's playing his rhythmic parts, holding it together. He's building, but he's almost the person that's playing more time, in a sense. So be aware of all those factors. Try to listen and see if you can hear how we're listening and see if it changes the way that you hear that stuff. So have some fun with rhythmic anchors, and we'll see you next time.